you've got a burgeoning population that we're just starting right now. And so there's going to be fluctuations in the number of adults that were that return back. You know, we have to have uh, enough adults returning back. We have to have successful spawning. We have to maintain good water conditions for those uh, incubating eggs to survive. And then we have to have those juveniles survive on their way out. This area down here is uh, the, uh, it's the top of Reach 1. In fact, this is called you know, Reach 1A, uh, heads downstream from here. And this particular area in Reach 1A is our prime uh, spring run spawning habitat. This is where they're gonna create their reds, their, the nests, and uh, do their spawning activity. So the, the cooler water that's held back over here on this side in Millerton is released through these valves uh, to provide those conditions that they need for spawning and then for their incubating eggs and, and uh, for the fish to move further downstream. So spring run are aptly named. That's the time of the year that the adults return back from the ocean. They come back in the springtime. Uh, we've been capturing them in the restoration area uh, since 2019 and it's been very consistently at the beginning of April. And then the spawning activity actually starts in the fall time. So it's usually around uh, September, mid-September, when uh, spawning typically starts. Drought overall has had uh, different impacts in different years. So last year, when we were dealing with some drought conditions, we were really concerned with maintaining a good um, cold water pool back here in Millerton Reservoir because the um, incubation and uh, emerging life stage of those young fish after, after spawning has occurred is one of the, that incubation period is one of the most sensitive life stages to, to temperature changes. So we were protecting that cold water pool back here so that we had that cool water to release during that incubation phase. Now this year is a little bit different we, uh, we don't have room in the river to release restoration flows because of drought conditions that have occurred up and down the Central Valley. We're releasing flows right now for, uh, uh, to meet ex an exchange contract at Mendota Dam. So right now these releases are not, uh, do not include any restoration flows. Okay, so this this is a, a rotary screw trap, and essentially what it's doing, it's, it's pointing into the flow, and as juveniles um, that have been spawned uh, in September, they're making their way down, uh, uh, migrating back towards the ocean. Um, they, particularly at, where, at this location, they would be in the smolt life stage, preparing for that ocean entry. Uh, they will we'll collect a portion of them in this screw trap. Mendota Pool is right in this area, and uh, that's where we're standing right now. And we are going to cut a channel that, that bypasses around Mendota Pool so both juveniles can migrate downstream uh, around Mendota Pool and adults will be able to go up around them. So right now, uh, both adult fish and juvenile fish uh, have problems in Mendota Pool at Mendota Dam. Uh, adult fish that are returning from the ocean, they approach Mendota Dam and they can't get around it. The only time they'd be able to pass there is when we have really, really high flows and they've, they've taken extraordinary measures at the, at the dam, like in removing some of their equipment. But in a normal year, adult fish would uh, approach the dam and, and not be able to move past it. Juvenile fish, they have problems coming downstream. What, what happens with the, the presence of the dam, it, 
raises the elevation of the, the water surface and makes a slow moving habitat. That, that provides the type of conditions for a lot of our non-native warm water piscivorous fish that, uh, that can you know, establish themselves in this pool and then feed on our juveniles that are making their way down. So here we are at Sac Dam right now. This is one of our lowest, uh, uh, one of our lower passage impediments. Uh, it's one of the biggest projects that, or one of the bigger projects that the uh, restoration program is working on. Here's one of the uh, alternatives we're considering um, for our construction project. The screen will uh, move juvenile fish that are moving downstream into this nature-like fishway so they would move through this uh, headwork structure and then go around Sac Dam and end up on the downstream side. So after these two projects we'll be in a lot better position because we'll have achieved volitional passage along with some of the other projects that uh, primarily the state is driving. We'll have volitional passage which takes us a long ways to restoring a, a, a salmon population to the San Joaquin. It's still always going to be a challenge and that's naturally expected for a population that's pushing the boundary of their you know historical range so that's something we will have to face you know ongoing in the future and and uh, we're working hard to you know overcome that and, and and help create a resilient population mm -hmm.